So before I start cooking or do anything, I always prep my kitchen. So here I'm unloading the dishwasher and reloading it with all the stuff in the sink so that I can start with a clean sink and some wash dishes. You never want to start with a messy kitchen. So super important. Then I get all my ingredients out and I make a prep plan. So I'm gonna go white, right on my whiteboard all the meals I'm making and the ingredients in each of them so I can stay organized. This helps so much if you are feeling overwhelmed while multitasking your meal prep. You can cook multiple things at once. Just keep organized by making a list of what ingredients go with what meal and it'll be a lot easier. The next step is chopping everything. So I recommend chopping everything at once it makes meal prep go a lot faster. It makes cooking a lot easier too. And while you're chopping stuff, you can just watch TV, listen to an audiobook, listen to a podcast, or just talk to someone on the phone you haven't talked to in a while. By the way, if you want my recommendations for knives and cutting boards and other tools, you can look in the description. I'll link them all below. I'm using Nakano knives. Nakano is a partner and I'm really into their knives. They have great sets. My set is called the Mito set and I'll link it below. So after you chop, I usually let everything sit out on the counter while I start cooking. And this time around, I'm doing a and one oven meal and one stove meal. The key to doing the oven meal and the stove meal simultaneously is that something can cook in the oven while you cook something on the stove and then you're multitasking really easily. So this time around, I also use some salmon for a stir fry. I am leaving the skin on. It's fine for meal prep. It tastes delicious. Apparently it adds extra nutrients as well, although that's not something I really pay attention to. First up, we're doing a dump and bake pasta. This recipe is in the Work Lunch Meal Prep Program for members. You can learn more about that in the description, but it involves basically cooking pasta that's just dry pasta in the oven with all the other ingredients so that you only use one dish. It's pretty awesome, but I will say that the pasta doesn't get cooked quite properly because it's not meant to be cooked that way. We're aiming for good enough, not perfect, and I would say if you're looking for a dish that's really, really easy, this is the dish for you. So I added zucchini, spinach, I'm adding marinara, and I'll add some cheese, and then we just cover it and bake it in the oven for like an hour. Super easy. This made about I think four to six servings. And this was my first test of the recipe, so I did change it. The one that exists in the program is a little different. But yeah, it gave me a lot of servings and it's freezer friendly, so you really just can't go wrong. Once all the ingredients are mixed together, I'm just going to cover it with foil, throw it in the oven at around 375 Fahrenheit and let that bake while I cook a stir fry. So while that bakes, we're gonna make a stir fry with the salmon and the other veggies I cut up. Oh, halfway through I did check on it to stir it and add more cheese, of course. So for the stir fry, my hack here is using one pan and just kind of washing it between cooking different ingredients so that way I reduce cleanup time. So first I'm cooking the vegetables because I knew the salmon would get a little weird in the pan. Like when I say weird, I just mean it might get sticky or just, I don't know. I wanted to cook the veggies first. The squash takes longer, so I'm adding that to the pan first while I'm also cooking my rice. Here I'm doing coconut rice, so I just kind of replace half the water with coconut milk. It's delicious. I highly recommend this method for cooking rice. If you haven't tried it, it's seriously so good. And it just gives the rice a little something extra if you've been eating rice a lot. I know I eat rice a ton. By the way, we have a ton of stir fry recipes in the Work with Lunch Meal Prep program. You can learn more about in the description. This one, I just kind of made up on the fly. It just was squash, green beans, salmon, and a very basic sauce. Pretty garlicky and lots of onions as always. I love squash because you really can use it in anything. It doesn't have to be a fall inspired recipe. I'm just using it in the stir fry and it was absolutely delicious. My trick with green beans is to cover the pan because they take a long time to cook and that makes them get softer faster. And once I was all done, I just removed it from the pan and added the salmon. If you're cooking fish, especially if you're new to cooking fish, I highly recommend using a nonstick pan. It just makes life a lot easier. 
Stainless steel can be really hard with fish. I still haven't nailed it, but I've seen it done. I know that it's possible, I just haven't done it myself. So I'm cooking it through first and I'm just trying to make sure that it's just cooked. I don't wanna overcook it because it, you know, you don't want to overcook your salmon when you reheat it. So you wanna make sure that it's just cooked. And then I added my sauce and cooked it a little bit more so that the sauce would get nice and thick and kind of stick to the salmon. So this is a great method. You can use pretty much any sauce. And then of course, once it was to my desired thickness, I added the vegetables, tossed it all together, and that's the meal prep. That was it. I did all of that while my pasta baked and I had at least 10 meals just with these two preps and it took me maybe an hour for the cooking and 20 to 30 minutes for the chopping. Super easy. So while I'm meal prepping, I absolutely like to take breaks and make sure I'm eating. You never want to meal prep on an empty stomach. It's just a recipe for hangriness. Um, so I'm eating some yogurt and cereal just while I had a quiet moment and it keeps me energized and happy. So here's the pasta bake. We're all set with that. I just divide that up into meal prep containers. Technically you could bake that into individual containers if they're oven friendly, but I didn't. I'll try that next time. And now I'm just going to portion out my stir fry in these containers. So here's a hack for the rice. If you want to make a nice little mound of rice, you just use a measuring cup like that and press it down. And there you go. You have this beautiful rice ball in your meal prep container. It's very visually striking. I really believe that if you make your meals pretty, you're going to want to eat them. You're actually going to look forward to them. Whenever I do this, I eyeball it. You know, I'm not into weighing my ingredients. I just don't think it's necessary. I think I'm just pretty good at dividing everything as evenly as I can. And who cares if it's not perfect? It's, it's gonna be fine. It's just about the same amount of food for each container. So this will last in the fridge for about four days. And I ate this for two lunches and one dinner. I like to alternate my meals. So that's why I like meals that kind of work for lunch and dinner. You know, you can kind of just mix and match them. So you're not eating the same thing for lunch every day. And then for the pasta bake that lasts in the fridge for about five days and it's freezer friendly for up to six months. I actually did end up freezing some of these portions in super cubes, which I'll link below. They're great for freezing food. And for both of these meals, I just reheated them in the microwave, but you can absolutely reheat them on the stove or in the oven. The rule of thumb is to reheat something where you cooked it. So I would reheat the pasta bake in the oven and the stir fry on the stove because that's where they were cooked. Finally, I'm doing some breakfast. So these are pineapple overnight oats. By the way, I learned the hard way that you cannot heat up pineapple and milk together. You can make these overnight oats and not heat them up and it's fine, but once you heat milk and pineapple together, there's something that happens. I'm not exactly sure, it's science, but it makes it really bitter. But overnight oats are an easy go-to. We have tons of recipes in the program and we have free recipes, we'll link them below. The regular ratio is just half a cup of oats to about a cup of liquid or milk and then you know some fruit in there and some i use some agave to make it sweet you can add nuts you can add chocolate chips whatever you want so that's the whole prep bunch of meals done in about two hours and i hope that you enjoyed watching this video let me know in the comments if you have any questions and hit that subscribe button if you want to see more from me thank you for watching and i'll see you next time